Hello, Sid Roth here. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. Two men, my guests, both died brain dead. One was brain dead for 11 hours. Both went to heaven. Both sent back with a message from heaven. We have a Hebrew word. It's called besheret. It means it's meant to be. I tell you, it is besheret that you be watching right now. Is there life after death? Or is the world we live in all there is? Is there a heaven or a hell? Is there a supernatural world that exists beyond our own? Sid Roth's special guests, Jim Woodford and Gary Wood, are ordinary people who actually died and returned to life. They will both share with you their first-hand account of what it was like to be in heaven. The vivid sights, sounds, and sensations in the presence of Almighty God their reunion with loved ones, and standing in the midst of the angelic realm. You will also hear about their encounters with the chilling reality of hell. You will know without a doubt that heaven is a wonderful place where every believer is promised to live for all eternity. And now, here's your host, Sid Roth. I'd like to welcome our ISN viewers as well as our broadcast partners, GV America and METV, which covers Israel and the entire Middle East. Many of you sending questions about life after death. Listen closely. Many of your questions will be addressed as you hear the, the words of our guests. You know, my guest, uh, I've just gotten... To, to really know over the last day. He's a retired pilot. Uh, you put in a lot of hours flying. How many hours? Well, just over 20,000. Just over 20,000. Uh, he's not, he was not a believer in the Messiah. His wife was a believer. Is it fair to say that your God was things, T-H-I-N-G-S? Yes, Sid, and I'm ashamed to admit it. I mean, I lived what I thought was the quintessential American-Canadian dream uh, of a successful career, successful businesses. And yet, I would wake up in the middle of the night and I'd have this yearning inside of me. And I foolishly interpreted that as meaning I needed a faster plane, a bigger car, a larger boat. I now know that that yearning inside of me was my spirit yearning for God's spirit. Yeah, but one day, again, he's his own God, so to speak. He wakes up and something unusual. His arms and his legs are numb. He gets diagnosed with a disease, frankly, I've never heard. It's, is it Guillain-Barre? Uh, it's Guillain-Barre. Guillain, close. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and if I understand this right, this is life-threatening, and you could end up paralyzed, but actually, if you don't get treatment right away, which you did not, uh, what, 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 what did they tell you to expect? Well, it's uh, often fatal, and Guillain-Barre is the deterioration of the myelin sheath on your brainstem. And it's similar to if you strip the insulation from an electrical cord and all the signals from your brain become pain and interrupted. And I went from being a guy that flew jets and raced cars to someone completely dependent on nurses and my wife, who is a nurse, for my care. How bad was the pain on a scale of uh, one being very little and 10 being unbearable? 15. Really? And I don't mean to be facetious, mm. but I truly never knew that pain like that existed. Mm. And Lorraine, my wife, will attest to that. 
not nuisance pain, not inconvenient pain, but wrenching, gut-wrenching pain to the point where I would keep a leather strap by my bed to bite on when the pain got intolerable. You to told me the from... pain was so bad that you had, pro you had pain when you blinked your eyebrow. I, I actually mean. trained myself to blink one eye at a time. Because That's of the pain. Every, every blink of my eye was pain, not just in my eyes, but throughout my whole body. My whole uh, nervous system had been interrupted by this incredible debilitating disease. Uh, did you at any point, because your wife is a Christian, uh, at any point ask God for help? Said I'm ashamed again to say it, never once did I cry out to God. All my life I had relied on my own abilities to get me out of close calls with airplanes or to get me through any situation. And, and again, I, I felt that people that relied upon God needed a crutch. And how absolutely wrong I was. But no, never once did I cry out, God help me. Okay, uh, so the pain is really 15. Uh, and you're, uh, you're doing a little business. And all of a sudden... The pain gets so bad that you take a whole bottle of pain medicine. I mean, but it, didn't you realize that could be fatal? You know, Sid, it was, an, it, it was a gradual thing. But I truly understand now addiction to prescription medications. I mean, I never, because I loved my flying career, I never took anything stronger than an aspirin. I didn't drink. I didn't do any of those things. And yet, to give me some semblance of normalcy, some ability to sleep two or three hours a night, I began to take more of the medication than I should have. And the result of that was, the more you take, the more you need. Hmm. So I understand to families out there who have a loved one in the throes of addiction, I didn't take it for recreation. I took it to give me some ability to get through my day. All right. Uh, so you take way more than you should have. What is the last thing you remember? You're seated in your car, but what's the last thing you remember? Actually, I was in my truck. Are you truck? Um, and um, I'm not sure, but maybe a truck is more comfortable to die in. <laughs> More leg room, so... Never to... experienced, I don't know. <laughs> but the last... As... as I, I took the last of the medication that morning, that evening, and I'm facing the setting sun for some reason. I didn't plan it that way. And... And I was trying to get up the, the, the energy to get out of the truck and inspect the field that I was trying to sell. And... And I saw a vial of prescription medication. I should have known. But you know something? When you get to that point, your body has lost the ability to reason rationally. All I was consumed with was stopping the pain. And so I took that. And so to answer your question directly, instead of that warm feeling that I had gotten used to of, of the, the pain easing for a few hours, all of a sudden my feet began to burn as though they were in fire. My hands and fingertips started to burn. And as that, as that burning sensation made its way up my body and in my arms toward my chest, I knew that I had done something truly catastrophic, irreversible. And I began, as it made its way to my lungs, I began to gasp for air. You know something, Sid? Dying is easy. Living is hard. And as I reached for my last gasp of breath, it was as though the cab of the truck was filling with water. And in that last instant, in my consciousness, I looked at the setting sun and I raised my hand and I remember it was shaking violently. And it was then that I said the first three of the six words that I believe are responsible for me being here today along with the prayers of my family. And I reached my hand up and I cried out, 
I cried out from a part of me that I didn't even know existed. I cried out, God, forgive me. Wow. Not out of fear. I'd faced death a couple of times as a pilot. Never flinched. But I had this overwhelming sense in those last nanoseconds of my life that I had wasted this beautiful life that the Creator had given me. And I had never honored Him for that life. And I was just trying to express my sorrow for not having led a better life. After that prayer, which is half of the prayer that got you back, what do you remember? I remember falling forward and hitting my head hard on the steering wheel of the truck. It was late evening, it was the evening, the sun was setting, and I lost, I, I was gone. I don't know exactly how long I was gone at that time, but I remember sitting back up. And I knew time had passed because the setting sun was now directly on the horizon. And suddenly I became aware that the horrific pain that I had endured for all those years since the onslaught of the Guillain Barre was gone. I felt more alive than I had ever felt before. And the pain was gone. I felt so great, I slid out of the truck. I walk about 15 feet away, and I'm feeling as though a heavy, wet overcoat has been taken off from me, and all the pain has gone with it. And I finally, in my stupidity, said, thought to myself, I finally got it right. I took enough of the medication. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it sounds, it sounds stupid, and it is, but even then, I thought I had saved myself. And, and then I look back at the truck and come to the incredible realization that I'm standing here and there's someone in my truck and I'm absolutely enraged. Who would dare get in my truck? And not only that, he's sleeping on the steering wheel. <laughs> And I'm ready to go over there and give him a good thumping. <laughs> Have you ever had a dream where you feel someone is chasing you and you can't move your legs? It was as though my, my feet were anchored to the ground and I could make small progress. And, find, and I was mystified. I looked down, I could see through my feet, but I thought, well, that's just the after effect of the medication. But I did manage to get a, a little closer to the truck. I look up and I look and I can see the face of the guy in the truck because he's leaned over the steering wheel, his face is toward me, and there's blood gushing from his mouth. The momentous, the, the, the moment when I realized that the guy in the truck was me <laughs> was truly earth shattering. And did you realize you were dead then? Well, yeah, because I'm over here, and yet I'm there. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> and I couldn't bear the thought of there being two of me. <laughs> so I, I struggled. I had this moment of panic that if I could just get back in my body, if I could just struggle my way over there and get back in my body, everything would be okay. But it wasn't okay. You, the next thing that happened you're flying, but there's no airplane. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, I'm saving on fuel. <laughs> but I begin to rise, and being a, a former pilot, I'm a good judge of altitude, and, and I'm at suddenly 100 feet, 200 feet. I'm drifting slowly backwards. I'm over the truck. I can look down in the bed of the truck, Sid, and see my toolbox. I can look through the rear window of the truck and see my body slope over the wheel, and I'm rising, I'm rising, and I am terrified. I can look out over the countryside. I'll tell I, you what, hold that thought. <laughs> he finds himself in a very unusual place, almost a crossroads between heaven and hell. When we come back, 
will find out what he did about it. Hell was actually, he actually heard hell and demons calling him by his name. Be right back. We will return with more of our special presentation of Life After Death in just one moment. The supernatural of God knows no bounds. And now there are no limits to equipping you to receive your supernatural breakthrough anytime, any place. ISN, the It's Supernatural online network is now available for your mobile devices and smart TVs with this free ISN app. People are astounded at the miracles they've seen others receive on our TV programs. Now, viewers are experiencing that same touch of God, and you can too. ISN offers live streaming of programs 24 hours a day, seven days a week, right on your mobile devices or smart TVs. Access our life-changing specials led by top world-class teachers, or choose from dozens of powerful episodes of It's Supernatural. Just go to your app store and download it for free. Television schedules were fine for my parents' generation, but with the ISN app, I can watch what I want on my schedule. Get ready to receive your supernatural breakthrough, your healing, your miracle. Download the free ISN app today. And now, back to our special presentation of Life After Death. Well, our people are on the edge of their seat right now. So you start going up, and it sounds, I've heard this story from others before, sort of like a tunnel you're going through. What is this? When I got to about 1,200 feet, I tilted my head back, and this beautiful golden circle appeared in the sky. And then the center filled with gold. It opened, and suddenly it was as though I had put all the thrusters on the jet engines. I went zipping into this tunnel of light, which I'm sure many yes. people have heard of. And, and I'm traveling at tremendous speed. I'm leaning back at about 45 degrees. I have incredible uh, uh, sensation of speed, but typically you feel the wind in your face. There was no wind and there was no rushing noise of, of the sound of travel and no jet engines. <laughs> and uh, and a tremendous speed, I bet, you know, I'm guessing Mach 1, possibly. And within a, sh a very quick period of time, I, I recognize that there's a, a brilliant light at the end of this tunnel. I come to it. It's covered in mist. I step out because I feel the tunnel closing behind me. I put my foot down through the mist, and then I bring my other foot out. The mist cleared. I look down. And I can't believe it. I am standing on the most incredible green grass you could ever imagine. I now know where the saying comes from. The grass is always greener on the other side. <laughs> I You're talking about heaven. <laughs> but I've been told the colors, are, oh. it's greener than any green we have here. If we have a spectrum of colors on earth, heaven has 10,000 times 10,000 more. It is a feast for the eyes. Okay, but then you see some darkness. I, I look up from that beautiful grass that radiated light from underneath my feet, and there's as though a dividing line, a median, has been drawn in front of me. To the right, there's this beautiful mist-colored field. Uh, the mist is laying over it. We pilots call it ground effect. There's beautiful flowers showing through it. But then to the left of that line, Sid, it was as uh, so different because that beautiful green grass went from green to brown to scorched to black and then dropped off in a crevasse. And I stepped forward and looked down into this cold black blackness. And then I saw something like a dim light at the bottom, like a light of fire, red fire. And suddenly I heard the strangest sound, like two massive iron doors opening and screeching on hinges that had not been used in a long time. And suddenly emerging from those doors was the most hideous creature you could ever imagine. Hollywood could never duplicate what I saw. I, I have to ask you, before this whole thing happened, if someone said to you, don't you want to go to heaven, what was, would you have said? Do I get frequent flyer points? <laughs> I, I have an idea you would have said that. No, of course, I mean, but I never believed. I, th that was just too good to be true, that there could be a place that beautiful 
I, I, I'm a technical guy. If it's not in a, a manual, I didn't believe it. Okay, so take me from there. So I'm looking, I can't believe, I see this thing coming out and suddenly I'm assailed by this horrific smell that comes out of that pit, an odor of death and decay and of things long dead, things that should never see the light of day. And it gazed up at me. And when its fiery eyes looked at me, it started to make its way up the wall of that pit. But its body, Sid, was formed of like a rolling mass of dark cloud with a face on it. And I heard the most horrific things, Peep, something, something screaming within the body of this creature. And then what absolutely horrified me was I heard my name, my name being called. This creature knew me. It knew me. And it was coming for me. And I was terrified. I mean, I'd love to tell you I stood there and wanted to do battle. I was terrified. And it reared up out of that pit over me. And the most hideous face imaginable, massive in its size, snarled at me. And there was this feeling of, uh, of an anticipation of glee that it couldn't wait to get its claws on me. And I was so horrified, I turned from the darkness toward the light. We are creatures of the light. And I automatically turned toward the light. And when I did, I sensed this creature, its breath on the back of my neck, the stench of its breath, and I felt a sharp claw move down my back. And it was at, at that point, remember I said, there are six words and the prayers of my family that make it possible for me mm -hmm. to be here today. And the first three words I cried out in the truck, God forgive me. In my absolute terror, and I had no reason to expect any help from God, I turned my self toward that mist with that creature breathing up my back and I lifted both hands and I cried out from a part of me that I didn't even know existed and I cried out God help me help me and Sid instantly three stars appeared in that mist like distant points of light but coming rapidly toward me and I focused on them to keep my mind off what was snarling behind me because I could hear the saliva from its jaws dropping on the ground behind me. And I concentrated on those lights. They came so rapidly, Sid, incredible speed. My pilot instincts took over. I was afraid they were going to make too fast a landing. <laughs> But they did a beautiful job because suddenly so, they took form. So then they escorted you. They took form. They were angels. God had heard the cry of someone that had never turned to him in his life. And, and of course, you know, I, I discussed this. It is never too late. I, I discussed this with Jim. And because he, uh, his, his upbringing was uh, Catholic, to him, when he cried God, he meant the triune nature of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Where did these angels escort you? These incredible beings, as they approached me, this beautiful light flooded over me, went beyond me and struck that creature. And when the light of the angel struck the creature, it shrieked and screamed and scrambled back down in that hole like a rat running for cover. Darkness and evil cannot exist in the light of God. Mm. You know, there is so much that this man experienced. But when I was reading about your experience, I was reading the chapter on sticky, S-T-I-C-K-E-Y, love. Tell me about that. The sticky love of God. Yeah. The angels came forward and, and, I, and they spoke to me through thought transference. And as they put their wing around me and held me close, I felt so safe and protected. And, and I reached out to touch the angel's arm. And Sid, when I did, I felt I had been impolite in doing that. And so I pulled my hand back. And when I did, the light of the angel's body clung to my hand till I got it back about six to 10 inches and then let go and went into its body. And that's why I tell people every chance I get, the love of God is sticky. It <laughs> wants to cling to you. And, and you told me, you told me that God was in process of replacing 
all your selfishness, all your greed, all your lust for love. Explain that. I don't think a human soul, a soul or spirit can go through this experience and not be profoundly changed. And I feel as though I have been truly born again. Not only have I come back from the grave, my soul has come back from despair. My spirit has found God again. And I will be eternally grateful. Tell me about the hall of knowledge. Heaven, you have to suspend your all that you've been taught about physics and gravity and time and linear space and spatial references, they simply do not exist in heaven. But I was shown the holy city. I mean, these incredible buildings of light, not hewn from stone, Sid, but hewn from blocks of light that exuded this warmth and love. And I saw the halls of knowledge, the halls of music, the halls of learning, the halls of of everything that you wanted to learn about the mysteries of God. Paul's and then they way. showed me the nursery. Hmm. The nursery, said. I think it speaks to the compassion of our God that little souls that are aborted, God gathers their spirit back and they're raised in the nursery in heaven. Hmm. Tell me about the size of your book of life. I'm ashamed to talk about it, uh, but in the Hall of Records, they keep a record of everything that you've done in and with your life. And it's not to create an I gotcha moment. It's for when you are shown the book of your life. And when they pulled, the angel pulled mine out of his robe and opened it for Jesus to read, I was absolutely shamed and mortified that all I had to show for a life lived that I thought was the ultimate in success was this small, thin book, no bigger than a, a, a diner, roadside diner menu. And, and I was ashamed that that's all. I should have, with all the resources and the time that I had, I should have had a book as thick as a Bible filled with all the goods, all the good deeds that I could have done. You know, as Charles Dickens said in his novel, mankind should have been my business. And instead, I was only involved in my self-ego. I am determined now that if I have the opportunity to go back again, to do everything good I can so that when Jesus reads the book of my life again, he's going to need three angels and a forklift to open it. <laughs> now, you've got to, you've got to tell me, when you looked in the eyes of Jesus, what did you see? It was the apex of everything that happened to me. Because when his eyes locked on mine, and he smiled at me, Sid, Jesus smiled at me. But when I looked into those eyes of gray and green and blue, I was lost in eternity. Because in those eyes, I saw sadness for the way I had lived my life. I saw sadness for the way we, as mankind, have rejected his Father's message. But I saw incredible love for me, for me someone that deserved none, nothing for me. And, and I also saw mixed in with that love in the eyes of Jesus, forgiveness for me, forgiveness for the life that I had lived and a chance to do it again. I am eternally grateful. My life, our lives, Lorraine's life and mine are now his. Let me tell you a couple of things that you need to know. While all this is going on, his wife and family are praying, and he sees it. He can see them praying. He comes back, and guess what happened to his incurable illness? Went out the window. <laughs> he tells me that he feels more strength than a 60-year-old. When we come back, I'm going to have another friend of mine that 
also went to heaven as a believer. It's, it's the one, one of the most incredible miracles you will ever see. He was in an auto accident, and a, uh, his voice box was crushed, crushed and, and, and destroyed, and he can never speak again. I'll have him sing for you. We'll be right back. <laughs> We will return with more of our special presentation of Life After Death in just one moment. Have you ever wondered what heaven is truly like? Do you know someone who questions life after death? Now you can know the testimonies of 16 people who have experienced life after death, each sharing in glorious detail what happens when we depart earth and what heaven is truly like. Call now and get The Heaven Package, which includes Jim Woodford's brand new book, Heaven, An Unexpected Journey, and Sid Roth's best-selling book, Heaven is Beyond Your Wildest Expectations, plus Sid's two-part audio CD set, Life After Death. This entire Heaven Package includes 16 different people sharing their first-hand encounters with the afterlife. Yours for a donation of $39. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9478. You will receive Jim Woodford's brand new book, Heaven, An Unexpected Journey. Through this book, you will read about his first-hand experience with heaven, angels, and the afterlife. Encounter the glories of heaven, the terrors of hell, and the stunning reality of the unseen world. Understand what it's like to hug an angel. Encounter the chilling realities of hell and the sights, sounds, and sensations of heaven. You will also receive Sid Roth's best-selling book, Heaven is Beyond Your Wildest Expectations, and his two-part audio CD, Life After Death. Both include the testimony of Dr. Gary Wood and that of 14 other people who have given amazingly similar accounts of their experiences with the afterlife. Through this book and two-part audio CD, you will understand what happens the moment a person dies, learn about God's tunnel of light, Hear powerful testimonies like Bill Weiss. I was being pulled up this tunnel and suddenly this bright light appeared. I knew immediately who it was. I said, Jesus. And he said, I am. And when he said, I am, I collapsed at his feet. Read and hear first-hand accounts about the awesome beauty of Jesus, full of overpowering love and compassion. Gain faith to believe God for your own healing as you understand that God has a body parts room in heaven where miracles are waiting to be accessed. Take a tour of God's heavenly library with volumes of books that contain the accounts of each person's life. Learn how your prayers are converted into visible fire and rivers that ascend to heaven. Hear the moving stories of family reunions in heaven. Not only my grandmother Mary was there, but other family members that had accepted Jesus Christ as the Messiah as Lord and Savior, they were there. Don't miss out on getting the Heaven Package, which includes Jim Woodford's brand new book, Heaven, An Unexpected Journey, and Sid Roth's best-selling book, Heaven is Beyond Your Wildest Expectations, plus Sid's two-part audio CD set, Life After Death. This entire Heaven Package includes 16 different people sharing their first-hand encounters with the afterlife. Yours for a donation of $39. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9478. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural, P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9478 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. And now, back to our special presentation of Life After Death. Now, if you think you were wrecked with that last word, <laughs> uh, uh, Gary Wood, what did you think of that word by Jim Wood, Woodford? That was incredible. It's supernatural. It just demonstrates the grace and the mercy of God. And as he was sharing, you heard something you have never heard before. What did you hear? Why? He was, he was seated right back there. What did you hear? I heard trumpets playing over here. Trumpets were blasting out. It sounded like when I was in heaven with the angels. When I was escorted up into heaven, I was escorted by the angels, and they were singing, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive honor and glory, wisdom and power and dominion. 
at the end of the day forever, oh Lord. I think that they are rejoicing in heaven they right are. now, and that's why you heard those trumpets. But okay, uh, you're driving, it's late at night, uh, you, uh, there's a car parked, a truck parked illegally, you crash right into it. Uh, wh what happened to you? Were you instantly dead? What happened to your body? I instantly was called up out of my body and stood above the top of the car and then caught up into a swirling, massive funnel-shaped cloud that began to grow wider and wider, and the light just engulfed me, but not as bright as the lights here in the studio audience right now. <laughs> but as I was going, the angels were escorting me. They were carrying me and singing what I just said. Okay, what did you die from? Well, my larynx was crushed. Actually, my uh, neck was broken in three separate places, C1, C2, and C3. Doctors say if your uh, neck is broken in C2, usually you're paralyzed for the rest of your life. My, my vocal box was totally crushed, which could have produced death. So there was several things that I died from. And uh, from a medical viewpoint, if you would have survived, which you didn't, of course, you were brain dead, but if you would have survived, would you ever sing or speak again? Never again. I felt as a young man that God had called me to sing, and it was after this experience that I entered into the full-time ministry. And I've just celebrated 50 years of full-time ministry. This happened 50 years ago. Okay, so you're being escorted. Take it from there. Well, my vocal, I just wanted to say my vocal cords were completely severed, so I medically now cannot speak or sing. So Well, now you're real, telling me. <laughs> real supernatural. On a live show. Real supernatural. I can't speak, Sid. <laughs> well, I was deposited at the bottom of a beautiful green grassy hill, like the previous guest just talked about. Same green. The, same green. The, the colors you cannot even begin to describe unless you've been there. But the grass that I was walking on came up through my feet, and then there were diamonds that just sparkled all over this grass. And I looked up and saw the city of God where this beautiful place the Bible calls heaven. It's laid out in a square, and it has the 12 foundations of Exodus 28, the high priest's breastplate wears this and the 12 foundations of these beautiful stones that are inscribed with the names of the apostles and then the gates are solid pearl. A scientist came up to me and said, those gates are over 500 miles in width, those, the, those gates. The bottom foundation is solid jasper. In the Bible, jasper stands for the glory of God, but it also represents diamonds. So ladies, think about it. One of these days, you're not going to be wearing a diamond ring or a bracelet. You're going to be walking on it, sweetheart. <laughs> okay. But one of the things that, made, that I've heard many say is when they get to heaven, someone that died and went to heaven before them, someone close, uh, welcomes them. Did that happen to you? I was greeted by my best friend in high school who had died previously, and he begins to take me on a tour. Now that oh, wait, wasn't he beheaded? Yes, he had lost his head in the accident. So he in heaven, in, how does his head look? Uh, he looked young <laughs> and healthy and whole and <laughs> complete. And uh, he took me on a tour. He began to take me, and I went to a library. This library had prayer requests, our spiritual growth, and then the dearest thing to the heart of God said, is the number of people that we've introduced and won to Jesus. And then I... So, excuse me, do they have records of the people that that you have won to the Lord or absolutely. someone else says? There, there, are, there are records there. And uh, heaven has like bleachers is the best way I can describe it, like you're looking on a sporting event. And people come over occasionally and they'll look down and they're cheering you on. And in essence, they're saying, we've run our race, we've finished our assignment, now you keep on going. Don't give up, don't quit, we're pulling for you. Now they're not there all the time, but occasionally. But what I saw is, is a man come down to an altar and he prayed the sinner's prayer. He asked Jesus Christ to become his personal Lord and Savior. Then I saw someone who knew that, that man on the earth went, traveled at uh, uh, 
speed uh, beyond light and found the man's mother in another section of heaven, uh, partake of, uh, participating in whatever she was doing. And he said, rejoice, rejoice, your son is coming home. <laughs> <laughs> And so I saw, I saw the angels actually had to bow their, their wings because they're created beings. They don't understand about being born again. But the people in heaven start shouting, got exuberantly happy over someone that had just come to know Christ as their Savior. Now, the, the, your friend John actually was giving you a tour of heaven. Tell me about the library room. Well, in that library room, there's, there's vast knowledge. We're going to continue to receive and learn. People had this misconception when you go to heaven that you're just going to float on a cloud for all eternity and play a harp, and absolutely <laughs> nothing could be further from and, the truth. In my opinion, that'd be very boring. It would be boring. <laughs> and there's supernatural things that we're going to continue to learn, and I believe we're even going to have uh, experiences that we're going to go out and share perhaps in other places. Uh, tell me about tears. And by the way, our, our last guest, he weeps a lot. Do you? Yes, sir. Uh, I saw the tears collected. The book of Psalms talks about that they're put into a bottle uh, of remembrance. And literally, the angels would come and take those tears and then the angels would fly up to heaven. I saw angels with six wings doing this. And they would fly up to heaven and they would take these uh, bottle of tears and present it right to God as a sweet smelling savor and sacrifice. Then I saw something said that looked like, I can only describe it as dry ice. It just began to bubble out. And I asked my friend, John, what's going on? What is that? He said, that's the praises of the people on earth below and in heaven above. So when we start rejoicing and praising God, angels get involved. They, they're right there in the midst of that. And that ought to make us want to praise God more enthusiastically <laughs> than we've ever praised Him in our entire life. Do you know that the thing that excited me the most of everything I've heard, two things but it involves the same thing. The parts room, this is like body parts. Mm -hmm. Someone's missing a, a leg, an arm, uh, a body, a heart, a liver. Tell me what you actually saw. Well, when I walked up the hill with my friend, there was a, a giant building like you would store something in, and it was called Unclaimed Blessings. And so when we opened the door, I was, I was just astounded. I stood there and just looked. There were legs hanging from the wall. There were arms. There was every part of one's anatomy there. And people say, why does there need to be a place like that in heaven? Because God has a spare part room for you. He has a miracle no, for he you. He doesn't need it in heaven. The miracle is for right here. He's we don't down need here on a the miracle earth. in heaven. And so I actually saw what happened. I actually saw someone on the earth pray. I saw a church service with an audience, a crowd about like your audience, and uh, the angels would actually come in and they would give the person the miracle. Sometimes it was instantaneous, but the key was that people said, I believe, I receive. I believe, I receive. And then the angel would deposit into them that miracle. On other instances, I saw people start saying uh, and making excuses like miracles aren't for today, or I don't have enough faith, or whatever. And the angels would have to abruptly stop and turn around and go back and put their miracle in this room called the unclaimed blessings. So I want to claim That's all sad. the blessings. That is sad. I want to, that's very sad. All right. I, I told you there were two things that excited me about this room. Number one, the room. But number two, when I spoke to you on the phone, you told me what God told you about the manifestation of body parts on earth. We're going to start seeing notable miracles. I have actually seen bones grow into feet. I have seen eyes come back into sockets. Myself, I had a heart attack on uh, 
the February the 6th of this year and was scheduled for surgery. I saw when I was laying there on the table as they were preparing me for surgery, the two stents that the doctor said I had to have put in my heart to survive and live. When I woke up, I saw my wife standing there and I heard her say, doctor, you said he had to have the stents to live. And he said he, it, it was, but it's a miracle. The doctor verified it's a miracle. I did not have to have the stent. No. And the doctor said, it. the doctor said, I got a brand new heart and brand new veins. And just before I came over here, I checked my blood pressure and it was 120 over 70. Uh, hey, I'll tell you what. I'm going to have him pray for new hearts and blood pressure. And uh, have you ever had anyone healed from cancer? Absolutely. I've been healed from cancer. I, I've been healed from pancreatic cancer in 2012. Oh. Okay. Describe to me when you came back into your body. Well, when I came back into my body, I had seen Jesus and Jesus, at first, before I came back, I'd seen Jesus and Jesus commissioned me to make him real to this generation. He told me what to tell people. He said, tell people there's a song to sing. There is a message to proclaim. There's a book to write. There's a missionary journey to take. He said, don't ever bind to the condemnation of the devil that you're unworthy. He said, you're worthy. And said, when I was in heaven, I saw my name written on the Lamb's book of life. When I saw that man who was forgiven, I saw what uh, the previous guest was talking about when it was eradicated all from the books. The Bible calls them the books. And they are wiped out. All our past transgressions are wiped out. And I saw my name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And it said next to my name, paid in full by the precious red blood of Jesus. <laughs> Tell me about what happened when the nurse came into your room. Well, it was nine months of what you would call recovery, and I started building my faith up. But it was a brand new song by a group, Bill Gaither Trio, and it came out and it went, He touched me. Oh, he touched me. Wait a minute, you have no voice box. Will you and stop oh, that? Oh, <laughs> the joy that floods my soul. Something happened, and now I know. He touched me and made me whole. And Jesus walked in my hospital room right then. He put his hands on my throat. He touched me. I looked in those beautiful blue eyes of his. And the nurse walked in, and uh, she came to serve me breakfast, and she dropped the tray when I <laughs> lifted up my hands and began to rejoice and praise the Lord. When we come back, uh, we're we're going to do something that is going to release miracles like you've never seen before. I have two men that have been to heaven, have been sent back, and they want to release miracles for you. Be right back. We will return with more of our special presentation of Life After Death in just one moment. Have you ever wondered what heaven is truly like? Do you know someone who questions life after death? Now you can know the testimonies of 16 people who have experienced life after death, each sharing in glorious detail what happens when we depart earth and what heaven is truly like. Call now and get The Heaven Package, which includes Jim Woodford's brand new book, Heaven, An Unexpected Journey, and Sid Roth's best-selling book, Heaven is Beyond Your Wildest Expectations, plus Sid's two-part audio CD set, Life After Death. This entire Heaven Package includes 16 different people sharing their first-hand encounters with the afterlife. Yours for a donation of $39. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9478. You will receive Jim Woodford's brand new book, Heaven, An Unexpected Journey. Through this book, you will read about his firsthand experience with heaven, angels, and the afterlife. Encounter the glories of heaven, the terrors of hell, and the stunning reality of the unseen world. Understand what it's like to hug an angel. Encounter the chilling realities of hell and the sights, sounds, and sensations of heaven. 
You will also receive Sid Roth's best-selling book, Heaven is Beyond Your Wildest Expectations, and his two-part audio CD, Life After Death. Both include the testimony of Dr. Gary Wood and that of 14 other people who have given amazingly similar accounts of their experiences with the afterlife. Through this book and two-part audio CD, you will understand what happens the moment a person dies, learn about God's tunnel of light, Hear powerful testimonies like Bill Weiss. I was being pulled up this tunnel and suddenly this bright light appeared. I knew immediately who it was. I said, Jesus. And he said, I am. And when he said, I am, I collapsed at his feet. Read and hear firsthand accounts about the awesome beauty of Jesus, full of overpowering love and compassion. Gain faith to believe God for your own healing as you understand that God has a body parts room in heaven where miracles are waiting to be accessed. Take a tour of God's heavenly library with volumes of books that contain the accounts of each person's life. Learn how your prayers are converted into visible fire and rivers that ascend to heaven. Hear the moving stories of family reunions in heaven. Not only my grandmother Mary was there, but other family members that had accepted Jesus Christ or the Messiah as Lord and Savior, they were there. Don't miss out on getting the Heaven Package, which includes Jim Woodford's brand new book, Heaven, An Unexpected Journey, and Sid Roth's best-selling book, Heaven is Beyond Your Wildest Expectations, plus Sid's two-part audio CD set, Life After Death. This entire Heaven Package includes 16 different people sharing their first-hand encounters with the afterlife. Yours for a donation of $39. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9478. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural, P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9478 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. And now, back to our special presentation of Life After Death. Now, once again... Before we go off the air, I want to thank our broadcast partners, GB America and METV Middle East Television. And don't forget, when we leave GB America, this program will continue on METV Middle East Television and ISN, the It's Supernatural Network. So be sure to stay with us to continue watching on ISN. And you're going to watch because, well, I didn't have time to say, uh, but... Um, Gary told me God said that the creative miracles are ready to happen in a big way. So if you want to download the ISN app, any smartphone in the world, any computer, just log into SidRoth.org slash ISN or download our free ISN app. Just go to the app store and type in my name, Sid Roth, S-I-D-R-O-T-H, and touch the orange ISN app. Once you have it, you can watch us anytime, 24-7. Now, Jim, you came back for what you're going to say right this moment. Tell people how they will avoid that darkness and live in the light. I want everyone to understand this. It is never too late. God stands ready to forgive any indiscretion as long as you call out to him with a contrite heart. Jesus is the most incredible, loving being <laughs> that could possibly exist. And Never think you are beyond his mercy. Never think it's too late. We tell you this, love conquers all. And the love of Christ wants us to come back to him. Those of you, if you do not know that you will be in heaven. You can know. If you would say this prayer with me and believe it 
in your heart, you will be in heaven. Repeat after me. Dear God, I've made many mistakes. Please forgive me. I believe the blood of Jesus washes away all my mistakes. And I'm clean. And my name is recorded in the book of life. And now that I am clean, and now that I have no past, I ask Jesus to come and live inside of me and be Lord of my life. I love you, God. Thank you for taking me. You promise to never leave or forsake me. Amen. If you said that prayer and meant it, I tell you, as many as call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. I know what's about ready to happen. I know it. I know that there's going to be a release of creative miracles. I know that there are some stories that both of these gentlemen, so many of them, so many over the top that didn't have a chance to share it. And they're going to share it when we come back. But make sure you get the ISN app. Just go right to the app store, type in Sid Roth. There'll be an orange app. It says ISN. It's Supernatural Network. Download it and you can continue watching this show. I have in the audience Jim's wife. She tells, as far as I'm concerned, only the wife will tell you whether this man <laughs> is a changed man. I have in the audience a pastor that was eyewitness of creative miracles that occurred when Gary spoke. I am so excited about what God's going to do that I can't sit. I have to stand. And I'm, I'm going to ask you, studio audience, did any of you sense the presence of God this, this time? How about you at home? Did you sense the presence of God? I can tell you, he's starting already. Pain in hands and wrists and backs are being healed right now. And as a matter of fact, I, I prayed with you last night, and you started speaking in a supernatural language. You'd never done it. The most supernatural man I know. We'll be right back oh. after this. <laughs> you something and I'm going to give it to you. I have in the front row here Jim's wife. <laughs> now I'm in trouble. <laughs> uh, okay. Now, seriously, you must be the happiest woman on earth. <laughs> Tell me the difference in your husband. A big, big change in this man. And my sister and I were just discussing it this week. Mm -hmm. That month by month, we can see him growing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, doing God's work. He's kinder, uh, so concerned about people, trying to do God's work uh, selflessly. 
putting in many hours and traveling. We're apart a lot through the month, and I support him in that, but he goes gladly and travels. When, and when you were praying with your family and he was dead, dead, brain yes, dead, yes, 11 hours, mm -hmm. just out of curiosity, did you have any faith he was going to come back? Come on, between the two of us. Um, <laughs> I was uh, in shock. Um, everything was very surreal. This can't be happening. Uh, I was walking around like a, a zombie, but I felt overwhelmed. I had been praying for a long time for Jim to come back to God. Uh, for God to put upon his heart uh, to live for God. That wasn't happening. Jim was very self-centered and very materialistic. And our marriage was struggling. And I upped my prayers to God. You're just going to have to break him to remake him. Wow, you didn't know what you were asking I for. I didn't. I didn't. So I, I say, wish, be uh, careful what you pray for. I wish you'd given me a heads up. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so in the hospital, when the doctor came out and, and told myself and my family that um, uh, he was clinically dead, there was no brain sign, um, that they were just keeping him going on life support, and if there were any other family members uh, to come, they need, needed to come now. And I said, oh, we have a son and daughter in, in Alberta, uh, in Canada. He said, well, call them right now and uh, tell them to get on the first flight home. And we're going to kind of uh, ready him for you to see, see him and, and tell him your goodbyes. But, but, you, but I have to ask you this question. When he came back, I would have thought not only would you be the happiest person on earth, I would have thought he'd be the happiest person on earth. You weren't too happy, were you? He were depressed. <laughs> I was. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me about uh, that. I was. I mean, look, you, and my friend, my, my fellow traveler knows this. <laughs> you cannot see what we saw and not be changed forever. And as beautiful as, uh, as it is around where we live and here, when I looked out on a sunny day, it was as though everything was covered with a gray film. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because I remembered the light of heaven, yes. the light of God. And there's nothing here that compares to it. Yes. The most grandiose vista on this earth is nothing compared to what heaven has in store for all of you. Now, you're a nurse. You must have been very concerned. He was, would you say he was almost clinically depressed? Very, very, very concerning. Uh, he did not come out of the hospital, as he said, running down the street, uh, shouting that, that you know, he's found God and, and all this. He, he was extremely depressed. Um, wondering about all these visions that he was scared to talk about them because people would think he was crazy mm -hmm. and i had to <laughs> uh, because our financial life uh he wasn't able to work and i went off to uh, pick up as many shifts as i could in nursing shifts and i was very concerned about leaving him uh, at the house he would be weeping uh, that he didn't want to be here, and um, I would have to encourage him and stand in front of him and tell the, him that he was given a mission mm -hmm. and that he could not do it by sitting here and wallowing in, in sadness and despair. What, what snapped you out of this? What snapped me out of it, Sid, was why I was so depressed was I couldn't believe that anyone would listen to someone who had never been a true believer, who had never prayed. What qualifications could I possibly have other than dying? <laughs> and, and what happened was a pastor friend of ours insisted I go and speak at his church, and something incredible happened, Gary. I, 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 <laughs> and I was hoping the service would be over quickly so I wouldn't have to speak very long. And he gets up and says, Jim, come on up. And I go up and I begin to speak 
You see, Jesus gave me a commission. Mm -hmm. James, this is not yet your time. Amen. Go back and tell your brothers and sisters of the wonders we have shown you. And I wasn't doing that. And the moment I started to share, mm -hmm. the instant it started to come out of me, it was as though a dam burst inside of me. Because finally, I was doing what Jesus had asked me to do. And it was the most incredible experience, Sid. I felt I was outside of my body, and someone else was speaking. And my pastor friend, Pastor Luke Weaver, told me, Jim, that's the Spirit speaking through you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you. now they can't shut me up. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, Gary, I am so excited about we're about ready to see this breakthrough of creative miracles and i we just happened to have in the front row a pastor and his wife who were eyewitnesses at two two services where you saw miracles what did you see yes sir the first one we were at a nursing home um gary dr gary had visited us the first time we'd met him and he was gracious enough to go down to a nursing home a, a member of our church has a ministry in there and, you know, of course, people laying in, on beds in wheelchairs and, and everything. And, and so Dr. Gary was just telling his vision of heaven. And, and this man kept raising his hand. And so Dr. Gary finally asked him what he, what he needed. And he just stood. He said, uh, are there any wheelchairs in heaven? And Dr. Gary said, uh, none. He said, and he stood up out of his wheelchair. He said, well, I think I'll get out of this one. Yeah. <laughs> and... And that man, he went from the wheelchair uh, to a walker, and now he's out of the nursing home. He's living on his own. Praise God. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Gary, you had a lot of miracles. It seems to me like the devil tried to take you out a number of ways and a number of times beyond going into a trashy into the truck. Yes, sir. I like to say that I'm a man on a mission with a message to make Jesus real to this Amen. generation. And my main thrust of the message I have, especially tonight, is we're fixing to enter into a season of notable miracles. Amen. And everything God has seasoned you for up until this time has prepared you for the greatest move of God that's going to happen since Azusa Street. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, we're going to see incredible, incredible miracles. Suzanne uh, called me. She was in the hospital. She just asked me if I would pray. I prayed just a simple little prayer, and I said, Now, Suzanne, remember, you've heard my story. Believe and receive. And uh, I didn't know till later that that exact moment, the power of God hit her so strong <laughs> that she fell off the gurney in the hospital. <laughs> and so they came back in to examine her and check her, and the doctor said, We've got to do a heart catheterization right now, instantly. They took her. And uh, the doctor came back out and said, lady, here's the x-ray. You need to print this up because you got a brand new heart. Amen. Amen. Uh, Jim, there's so many things that, that you saw in heaven, but there's something that interests me. Tell me about what you learned about colors and sound and music. Again, take off your earth hat, put on your heaven hat. <laughs> Imagine a place where time doesn't exist, where past, present, and future has collapsed all into one, where color has sound mm -hmm. and sound has color. Amen. We have to suspend our belief of our earthly physics to, under, to even begin to appreciate what heaven has in store for you. Amen. Amen. Uh, what, do you what did you learn in heaven about music? Well, when I was taken down into the river of life, the, the rocks as the water of life was flowing over them made a musical sound. Yeah. And then I was lifted. Yeah. Everything in heaven, uh, I'm not just making this up. The streets are called Hallelujah Boulevard and Praise the Lord Avenue. <laughs> I, I saw flowers, Sid, absolutely singing. I saw musical notes dancing over the hilltop, <laughs> and they would go into a person. When I came out of the river of life, uh, everyone was, was singing, all hail the power of Jesus' name. 
Let angels prostrate fall. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him, crown him Lord of all. So I turned to my best friend and I said, why are they singing hymn number 132 <laughs> in the Baptist hymnal in church below? And he said, Gary, all songs originate in heaven. First time, I, he said, then they're dropped into the heart of someone who will be receptive and give it forth for the glory of God. The first time that I heard the chorus, Alleluia, was in heaven. That was the first time I ever heard it. First time I heard the little chorus, He is Lord, was in heaven. I can mention other songs that I've heard now here upon the earth. So I say to all musicians, do we have any musicians? You play or singers out there, you can become pregnant with a song directly deposited in you from heaven. Sid, right now, someone's being healed of ringing in your ears. And some, but it's kind of a ringing in your ears and a buzzing noise that's that's kind of annoying. Mm. It's annoying, but if that's you, just receive and believe right now and accept it. Amen. I decree and declare you're healed and whole Thank in Lord. Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. What would you say to someone that has been believing and believing for their wife or for their husband to know the Messiah? And year after year after year has gone by. What would you two say? Go ahead. It's never too late. Yes. It's never too late. You've all seen the painting, I think, of Jesus knocking on the wooden door. He knocks on the door of your heart. He knocked on mine all my life. Mm -hmm. And finally, I, <laughs> I had to die to open the door. <laughs> <laughs> I would just say don't give up yeah. because your greatest miracle is right before you. And the devil's going to push the hardest right before you have the breakthrough to receive the promise. Uh, what, some what, some what, of you are right now on the very edge. You're just on the very edge of receiving your miracle. And so the devil wants us to give up. He'll say, here's what the devil will say. There's not that much money in the whole world. And if there was, you're not going to get it. Mm -hmm. Just say, shut up, devil. You're a liar. You're, you're lying. He's going to tell you everything negative that you're not going to get. So uh, I agree with with Brother Jim. Just keep standing. Don't give up. It's never too late. But, but not only that, of course you never give up because you don't have to stop swinging at the baseball. It's not three strikes and you're out. It's when you stop swinging, you're out. Don't stop Swinging, that's number one. But number two is even more exciting. We're about ready to have the greatest uh, glory in the history of planet Earth is about ready to hit us. And guess what? All of the promises, all the prayers, all the prayers that you have prayed, all of them, they're ready to answer. And what Gary, what you said is so true. The reason that you've had so much thrown at you lately is to have you stop swinging. Never give up. Never give up. Never give up. Never Never give give up. up. Yeah. My grandson, this is real brief. My grandson's eight years old and he's playing championship baseball game a few weeks ago. My son texts me. And he said, Dad, it looks like it's over. The score's 13 to 5. You know, they, they're they allowed to make eight runs in an inning. Well, anyway, all of a sudden, uh, with less than a minute, my son texts back and says, I, I can't believe it. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. <laughs> and so, anyway, they won 14 to 13. And I asked my grandson, I said, what happened? He said, he calls me Papa Big Stuff. He goes, Papa Big Stuff. He said, I told my teammates, we're going to win, you're going to win, you're going to win, you're going to win, you're going to win. And this morning when I woke up, five is the number of grace. Amen. That's what happened to my brother, the grace <laughs> and the mercy of God. Amen. And so just don't give up because you're right on the cusp of receiving that manifestation. If you'll just keep holding on, keep on praising the Lord. Now, you were told, Jim, that the, the angels would always be with you. Do you feel them with you? I feel them with you now. They're here. Absolutely. They're here. They are here. And they are so proud of you when you show your love for Jesus. It makes them shine even brighter than they are. And they take 
And it's not a sinful pride, but they kind of hold you up and, and look at you and say, that's my person. <laughs> have, have, <laughs> Gary, just out of curiosity, in this life, have you, have you ever seen your angel? Have you ever felt him? Absolutely. I could tell you a story. It'd take a while, but he, I, he actually appeared to me uh, with my good friend and spiritual mama, Billy Brim, up on Prayer Mountain. He actually came up to me and gave me a message from the Father. And uh, later when I was trying to introduce him and show him to some pastor friends of mine, he was just gone. But he gave me a message in 2012, and that has been fulfilled now in these last few uh, years and is continuing to come to pass daily. You told me, Jim, that you have a sense of something big ready to happen. Was that in Israel or the whole world? I have a dear friend in the audience, Pastor Vard Gaynor and his wife Eileen, and I see him there. And I've told, Vard has heard me say this many times, I came back with the sense that there's something huge coming. And I don't sense it's ominous if you are a believer. There is going to be something that's going to break, and it will be an irrevocable sign. No one will ever be able to dispute its computer graphics. It's a product of the Disney company <laughs> who do wonderful work. It is an actual irrevocable sign of the majesty of God. Yes. Uh, Gary... Your faith is sky high. And, and you know what? You are just entering into the face of your miracle ministry. You've prayed for people, then they've been healed. I would like, Gary, I want you to pray as God directs for people to be physically healed all over the world as well as the studio audience. And then I want you to pray whatever God shows you. Master, I thank you for the word. When I was in your presence, you spoke to me very clearly and said, as much as possible, always decree and declare, it is written, and then we can confidently say, it is finished. So I decree and declare what your word says. I am the Lord thy God that healeth thee. And Father, your word says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. So we, Master, begin to worship you. We begin to magnify and to praise you. We release the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit that breaks every yoke of bondage. And I ask for the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead to come and minister to everyone in this audience and to those that are watching around the world. And we have the confidence, according to the Bible, that when we pray your word, you hear us, and we know it's done. So now we rejoice and say, I believe, I receive. If you need something from the Father, lift your hands up. Say, I believe, I, believe, I, receive. I receive, in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. I believe, I receive, I believe in, I receive Jesus in Jesus' name. Jesus name. Oh, you were supposed to pray for blood pressure. I'll get so many letters, Gary. <laughs> I decree and declare supernaturally that your blood pressure is going to 120 over 80. And I call every cell in your body that's not energized with the power of the Holy Spirit to be removed. And that every portion of your blood is purified by the word of God. Any malfunction is removed and your heart is healed. If you have a heart problem here in the studio in any area in your heart area, put your hand over your uh, chest right now. In the name of Jesus, you gave me a brand new heart. You gave me brand new arteries. So in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare brand new hearts from the spare parts room. Lift your hands up. Say, I believe I receive. I believe I, I believe I receive. God's healing someone of asthma. If someone is being touched with asthma problem. Just take seven deep breaths and exhale them. And God is touching you right now in that area. Jesus and, name. And, and you know, Jim, you were you have more sympathy and empathy for people in pain than anyone I know. Would you pray that pains of all kinds would be yes. removed? 
Lord God, I pray to you, and I ask that you bring upon this studio audience and upon all those watching today the grace of the healing of their hearts and of all physical ills that they may have. Lord God, I experienced firsthand the misery of pain. I sense the pain. And as I pray here now, I sense in the studio audience before us right now, there are three wounded hearts that are crying out. They are missing their loved one who has gone to join you. And I want them to know, I want them to know that their loved ones are with you. Yes. I sense their peace, Lord. Yes. I sense their peace. And Lord, once again, bring your healing grace upon people. Make them understand the depth, the, the, the width, the height of the love you have for them. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Now, one more thing. I want you to pray that physical pain leave people right now. God, bring upon this group and all who watch and believe your grace to heal every physical ailment that they may have, Lord. I saw the glory that you are capable of, and we ask that that glory come upon us this day, come upon us at this moment, and heal the people that are before us and listening to us. In the holy name of Jesus, we ask that you cover us with the blood of your grace and love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And, and, that, and I'll tell you, that glory is going right through your computer right now, right through your cell phone, right through your television, right now, wherever you are in the world. I, I, I feel people, the pain in their shoulders and neck. You, know, you just start moving. You start moving your shoulders. You start moving your neck. You have back pain. You just stand up at home or here and just bend over and bend right into your healing. You have pain in your hands and fingers, pain of any kind. I tell you, go in the name that is above every name that said it is finished. Or another understanding of that, it is paid in full. It is paid in full. Is there anything God is showing you? Any last word? There is. All of you who are here and who are listening, this is a moment, if you have any doubt in your hearts, to come to Jesus. This is the time to expel any doubt, to put fear behind you, to step out in faith, to believe that Jesus loves you beyond any capacity you have to understand. And for the studio audience, and for those of you at home watching and listening, this is a moment that can be change a force in your life for the rest of your life. You live in the land of the dying. You go to the land of the living. How? Oh. Huh? Now, that is profound. <laughs> Did you hear where you live? You live in the land of the dying. You go to the land of the living. But yes. remember that book. That book has the names of those that you have affected. And some of you say, I haven't affected anyone. The last time you reached out to love someone, to do something, write a letter to someone, call with an encouraging word. You reached out in love, and every act of love is recorded, but the greatest love of all happened when our Messiah voluntarily, unnecessarily for him, died for your sins. And by his wounds, you were healed. I tell you, the Lord has already blessed you the Lord has already smiled upon you. The Lord has already surrounded you with his favor. The Lord has already given you his shalom. That's his completeness. Complete in your spirit. Complete in your soul. And complete in your body. In the name of that every knee must bow and every tongue confess. Yeshua HaMashiach Sikenu, Jesus the Messiah, our righteousness.
Have you ever wondered what heaven is truly like? Do you know someone who questions life after death? Now you can know the testimonies of 16 people who have experienced life after death, each sharing in glorious detail what happens when we depart earth and what heaven is truly like. Call now and get The Heaven Package, which includes Jim Woodford's brand new book, Heaven, An Unexpected Journey, and Sid Roth's best-selling book, Heaven is Beyond Your Wildest Expectations, plus Sid's two-part audio CD set, Life After Death. This entire Heaven Package includes 16 different people sharing their first-hand encounters with the afterlife. Yours for a donation of $39. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9478. You will receive Jim Woodford's brand new book, Heaven, An Unexpected Journey. Through this book, you will read about his firsthand experience with heaven, angels, and the afterlife. Encounter the glories of heaven, the terrors of hell, and the stunning reality of the unseen world. Understand what it's like to hug an angel. Encounter the chilling realities of hell and the sights, sounds, and sensations of heaven. You will also receive Sid Roth's best-selling book, Heaven is Beyond Your Wildest Expectations, and his two-part audio CD, Life After Death. Both include the testimony of Dr. Gary Wood and that of 14 other people who have given amazingly similar accounts of their experiences with the afterlife. Through this book and two-part audio CD, you will understand what happens the moment a person dies, learn about God's tunnel of light, Hear powerful testimonies like Bill Weiss. I was being pulled up this tunnel and suddenly this bright light appeared. I knew immediately who it was. I said, Jesus. And he said, I am. And when he said, I am, I collapsed at his feet. Read and hear first-hand accounts about the awesome beauty of Jesus, full of overpowering love and compassion. Gain faith to believe God for your own healing as you understand that God has a body parts room in heaven where miracles are waiting to be accessed. Take a tour of God's heavenly library with volumes of books that contain the accounts of each person's life. Learn how your prayers are converted into visible fire and rivers that ascend to heaven. Hear the moving stories of family reunions in heaven. Not only my grandmother Mary was there, but other family members that had accepted Jesus Christ as the Messiah, as Lord and Savior, they were there. Don't miss out on getting the Heaven Package, which includes Jim Woodford's brand new book, Heaven, An Unexpected Journey, and Sid Roth's best-selling book, Heaven is Beyond Your Wildest Expectations, plus Sid's two-part audio CD set, Life After Death. This entire Heaven Package includes 16 different people sharing their first-hand encounters with the afterlife. Yours for a donation of $39. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9478. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural, P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9478 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today.